What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 fake WWE storylines that led to real fights between wrestlers. Sometimes uh tensions may arise in a, a storyline, and you know, when it comes to storylines in wrestling, you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to buy into it, but obviously it's not real beef. Well, sometimes it may end up being real beef, or maybe um uh, uh, a storyline is created from actual real beef you guys know the infamous jeff hardy uh not jeff hardy matt hardy lita in edge love triangle that was a real thing a real situation that vince mcmahon said you know what we're gonna turn this into an angle because it's actually real and people were interested and bought into it because it was, it was a real thing some people feel like it was not cool to use that as an angle but once again it's all about the bottom dollar especially when it came to vince so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel man and let's get right into this one. Oh, also i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world <laughs> When two wrestlers enter into a storyline, they have to work closely with each other and truly have to get to know each other to make the storyline work to that its fullest potential. Brutal. Unfortunately, this can result in bad blood and the two specific wrestlers having a ton of resentment towards one another. This negative resentment often continues on for years and can even last for decades with no sign of any reconciliation. Mm. Now, believe it or not, it's not just a theme that runs throughout the decorated history of WWE as incidents of this nature have taken place in every major wrestling company from this WCW true. to AEW. While your ass is wrestling on YouTube, praying for a chance at the company I was building. Wow, wow. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestling feuds Damn. and storylines that Jeez. resulted in real life conflict. Hey, she went below the belt on that one. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive <laughs> leads. Number 10, CM Punk and Triple H. Oh, As CM Punk has made a ton of enemies during his time as an active heavily pro wrestler, documented. but his feud with Triple H certainly cuts deep for the straight edge savior. In 2011, Punk became the hottest thing in pro wrestling as this was after the infamous Pipe Bomb promo and there was a clear opportunity for WWE to make Punk the top star in the company. Of course, of course. Unfortunately, WWE botched Punk's ascension to the top and one of the reasons for ever. this is that WWE decided to have Punk lose to Triple H at the Night of Champions Which pay per view. Made no sense. At this point in time, the game was semi-retired and there was no need for Triple H to attain a victory of this magnitude. Thank you. <laughs> Punk cites this as the reason he lost all of his positive momentum and it's hard to disagree. Punk Punk himself admits that he had a ton of resentment towards Triple H for what could be perceived as a burial on pay-per-view, and when WWE wanted Punk to face Triple H at WrestleMania 30, it was a contributing factor to Punk walking out of the company and never returning. The game has never commented in depth on his feelings of Punk, but it has been reported that Triple H wants nothing to do with a former champion. However, time heals old wounds and it would be interesting yeah. to see if the head of WWE creative would be interested in repairing their damaged relationship. Now well, here's the thing about that. Uh, if you just go back down memory lane, I never understood that. He is the hottest thing in wrestling right now. He actually has people checking out Monday Night Raw and seeing what's going on with the CM Punk guy or people being brought back into the company like me. And you have him lose to Triple H, who wasn't even like a full-time wrestler at that point. For what? Why? That made absolute no sense, in my opinion. Now, I know there has been discussions of if he does come back to WWE. I think Triple H has an open mind about it. I don't think I'm not sure about the higher ups and everyone else opinion on CM Punk. But I just I I think he's just done with wrestling altogether. I think it's just I think it's just best for him to just kind of walk away from it. Uh, I don't see it anytime soon him ever coming back to wwe anytime soon i could be wrong but i just don't see it happening that would be crazy and tony khan would be a fool to let him go like that because it's like you're letting him go to the opposition like you know what i'm saying so i don't know Number 9, Booker T and Batista. This I did not know. In the summer of 2006, WWE implemented a feud between Booker T and Batista over the world title on the Which was fun. brand. However, this feud would be put into serious jeopardy during a filming of the commercial for the SummerSlam pay-per-view. 
Booker believed that Batista had an aura of cockiness and ungratefulness, and this ultimately led to a physical confrontation between the two. Oh, it was reported shit. that Booker may have gotten the better of the physical exchange, but other eyewitnesses' reports from the likes of Fit Finley differ. WWE could have potentially scrapped the feud, but the two were as professional as they come in their matches, and the duo worked a number of times together throughout 2006. Nah, a, in relation to their current matches. status as friends, Booker claims that the two now have a good relationship, and their prior issues are simply water under the bridge. Which is good. Number eight, Eddie Guerrero and Kurt Angle. This I didn't the know. The love either. and admiration Kurt Angle has for the late great Eddie Guerrero is well documented. Did not know. But it wasn't always this way. When the two embarked in a feud in 2004, the two had a ton of personal issues and these issues eventually got physical. According oh, to Angle, these problems between the two escalated when Guerrero accused Angle of being stiff in the ring. Angle would discuss this on his podcast where he added, We were getting head heat on Eddie and it was Luther Reigns, Mark Jindrak and myself. I didn't touch Eddie, okay, so I, I couldn't have been the one that stiffed him. After the show, I, and I, we all wait in Gorilla and say thank you and shake each other's hand. And I went to shake his hand. I said, thank you, Eddie. He said, no, no. What you did out there was wrong. You were stiffing me. I said, Eddie, I didn't touch you. He said, uh, bullshit. You were stiffing me. Oh. I, uh, you, were, you were beating me up. And I, I, sh I pushed him. And he double legs me. Oh, An shit. amateur wrestling double leg. And I get him down. <laughs> Gold medals, I got him in by a the front way. headlock and I start choking him out. <laughs> oh, shit. Rather hilarious. Oh, wow. <laughs> he said, yo, I, I didn't touch you, Eddie. I mean, <laughs> it just went from that to start choking him out, man. But, hey, man, sometimes things, accidents happen. <laughs> you know, testosterone is running high. <laughs> That's crazy. It was Big Show who eventually broke the fight up. And according to Angle, he put both men in a different corner to stop the commotion. Wow. Angle would also reveal that the physicality kicked off once again in the locker room. And this time, JBL had to break it up. But despite numerous physical confrontations, the two were able to patch things up. And whenever the two worked together in the ring, it was never apparent that there was any issues nah, between the two WWE legends. Great matches. Number seven, Recipe CM Eddie. Punk and Ryback. Oh, this uh, is, yeah. CM Punk does not like Ryback. I, I don't even think he like him to this day, probably. <laughs> the hatred between Punk and Ryback is no secret. And it truly began when the two first worked together in 2012. Ryback was rather reckless with Punk in the ring, and this negligence resulted in Punk getting injured time and time again. Mm -hmm. Punk believed that Ryback had a personal vendetta against him, and this would lead to a confrontation between the two backstage. When the two feuded again in 2013, Punk would claim that Ryback was even more reckless, and his actions during their 2013 Damn. took years off his life. Punk would claim that Ryback was one of the main reasons that he loathed his time in WWE and simply wanted out. In relation to Ryback, he usually likes to take shots at Punk via social media, and when Punk suffered Wait, an injury in 2020 on, 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 via on. social media, Punk, it was like working a 90-year-old Karen. Damn. And when Punk suffered an injury in 2022, he would tweet out karma rules, which made no sense. Let's just say that it's unlike. Yeah, th the thing is, Ryback can have a point all he wants, but he uh, he he does he just takes it overboard. Like, if you feel like Karma got CM Punk or whatever the situation is, all right, keep that to yourself. Like, injuries and stuff like that, I don't care who you are, man. I know you may not like a certain person, you know. And I get it. We're human, so our, our emotions tend to get to flowing. And sometimes you may say or, or think pretty fucked up shit. But for you to go out there and be like, Karma rules after a dude got injured and you hadn't even had no contact with the guy in many, many years and anything like that. It's not like he, you know what I'm saying, smashed your wife or, you know, <clears throat> like messed up your, your, you know, your, your car or some shit. Like, come on, bro. When he does that, it's hard for people to have sympathy for him. That's all I'm saying. He has all the right in the world to feel how he should feel. But it don't make it no better when you're happy about somebody getting hurt. It's like, bro, what do you... Now you just come off like a dickhead. Likely that these two will ever patch things up. Number six, Bret Hart and Goldberg. Oh, this is... That's well established how well Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels well. had a ton of beef in the 90s. But there's perhaps one wrestler that Hart loathed and continues to loathe even more than HBK himself. Uh -huh. Whenever Hart takes part in any type of media interview, he's bound to bring up his hatred for Bill Goldberg. 
Hart's dislike of the former world champion began in late 1999 when the two wrestled in the main event of the Starcade pay-per-view. Goldberg delivered a stiff kick to Hart's head and this ultimately resulted in Hart retiring many years before he should have. Mm -hmm. Hart would never let this bad blood go and despite Goldberg apologizing numerous times over the years, Hart has refused to accept his apology. In recent years, Goldberg has stated that he's finally done apologizing. If he isn't going to accept his apology, then there's ultimately nothing he can do about it. Number five, Bubba Ray and Dudley. This is a very fair point. This is a very fair point. I know a lot of people say, oh, he ended Bret Hart's career and all this other stuff. And that could have, you know, obviously been the, the situation. I'm sure it wasn't intentional. I don't think he just intentionally was trying to do that. And, you know, when a person's just been apologizing for many, many years and you still like, nah, fuck you, there's nothing you can do. It's out of your hands. If you're sincere with your apology and you had no bad blood and it wasn't no ill intent, all you can do is, all right, well, I tried and move on with your life. And Batista. One this of the I didn't know that either. Batista had an issue with during his time in Evolution was Bubba Ray Dudley. When Did the two that. worked together in tag matches during the Ruthless Aggression era, the two wouldn't meet eye to eye, and on one occasion, everyone got severely hurt. Oh, Batista would discuss this during the WWE Network documentary titled The Ruthless Aggression Evolution. This is when Batista had to say in relation to working with one half of the Dudley boys. We just gotten in the ring and Bubba came full on running at me. He just smacked into my arm and my tricep just popped. Oh. I went back and tagged Randy. I think he was irritated with Randy and I to begin with. Just being that we were two big muscular guys who are now with Ric Flair and Triple H. I think he just hated it. He was always a dick to both of us. Damn. Number 4 CM Punk That's and cold, Jeff Hardy buddy. Well, The most celebrated feud of 2009 was the feud between CM Punk this was and a Jeff good feud. Hardy. The feud blurred the lines of fiction reality uh -huh. and as a result produced one of the strongest stories WWE have ever delivered. It was so good. Hardy had an issue with Punk as he believed that some of the content of his promo material crossed a line and went too personal. When Hardy left WWE in 2009, they would air a segment which featured Punk intimidating Hardy yeah. and this made Hardy so angry that he cut a shoot promo on Punk whilst clearly under the influence. Oh. In this shoot promo, Hardy would claim that he was the one who made Punk a superstar in WWE. Hardy would declare that Punk was way too cocky outside the ring and his way of life wasn't the right way anyone should have been living. It was never made clear if the two men ever had a discussion about their issues with one another, but it was reported that AEW could potentially be looking to do a featured Punk vs Hardy matchup, with both of them being in the company simultaneously. But sadly, due to outside factors, <sighs> this never materialized. Oh, no. Can y'all imagine how great that would have been? <laughs> huh. <laughs> Number three, Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose. Well, one of the most this anticipated matches it's heading into. We Re just checked out a video recently of uh, Brock Lesnar's like people he didn't want to work with, like or didn't really care to work with in the ring. WrestleMania 32 was between Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose. The two would collide in a no holds barred street Should have been good. expected a war. Yes. Unfortunately, the match was rather lackluster. Fucking it wasn't anything mid. remotely what fans wanted or expected. The hardcore style spots were limited, and if it was if both men didn't want to be there. Yeah. It then surfaced months later, thanks to a podcast interview that Dean Ambrose had with Stone Cold Steve Austin, that he hated working with Lesnar. Ambrose would call Lesnar lazy and criticize him for not wanting to do anything memorable or special. Ambrose would maintain this viewpoint for years, and in a 2019 interview with Wade Keller, Ambrose once again went off on the beast incarnate. So, like, day of the show, he doesn't show up till like three o'clock. <laughs> We've not talked about Damn. any of this match. Show starts at like five, we're like fourth. Well, he's not very interested, like, doesn't really want to be there, you know? And th this is the most important match of my life. I'm like, Everybody at WrestleMania wants to show up and steal the show. Mm -hmm. There are people. There are people on that show that that night that I know have been re literally rehearsing their match for a month, like at the performance center. Like, and I was like, dude, we have the opportunity. We have a street fight. We can do anything. I'll take any bump you want. Please, power bomb me in the front a hundred times. Oh, we don't need all that. Uh. <laughs> Lesnar never formally responded. Bro, Lesnar, he, he didn't give a fuck. He's, <laughs> he's like, bro, well, I'm not doing none of that shit. <laughs> I, I honestly think if they would have really, this would have, at this point, this possibly would have been one of Dean Ambrose's biggest matches of his career. 
and he's in there with Brock Lesnar. I was excited about this match. Dean Ambrose being this crazed lunatic that doesn't care about his own body, I bought into it. We knew he wasn't going to win, but we knew it was going to be a car wreck. It was going to be carnage. We barely got any of that, man. Bonded to Ambrose's comments, but his good friend Paul Heyman would go on to call Ambrose's comments ridiculous and would question the merit of Ambrose's disparaging remarks. Number two, Triple H and Scott Steiner. I think I heard about Scott this. Scott Steiner returning to WWE in 2002, his first notable rivalry was with the resident top heel in the company, Triple H. This feud would be an utter failure and led yeah. to a ton of animosity between the game and the former WCW champion. The matches the two had at the Rumble and the New Way Out pay-per-view were both unbelievably bad. <laughs> Steiner was suffering from drop foot during this time and this impacted the quality of the matches on offer. Steiner believed that the game was sabotaging him to make him look as bad as possible as Triple H was concerned that Steiner was going to take his place on the card. The game simply believed that Steiner wasn't as good as he thought he was and ultimately had no place working made of at level matches in the year 2003. That. Steiner he would continue badmouthing Triple H for years, however in 2022 he would claim that he was letting bygones be bygones and that he was officially putting his past behind him. And I hope so. I, 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 I definitely do hope so. Um, you know, you gotta let those old grudges go, bro. Time it moves quick. We're already in 2023. It seemed like yesterday we were just in uh 2020. It seemed literally like yesterday we were just in 2020, and now we're in 2023. So yeah, it's good that he was able to let bygones be bygones. But one CM Punk and Adam Page. Oh, this is on paper. CM Punk sense. versus Adam Page sounded Being like a one. fantastic feud, but in reality, it was overshadowed by real life drama. Punk's problems with Paige began during the build-up to their double or nothing uh -huh. matchup, as Paige reportedly said something that Punk wasn't comfortable with, and Punk from that point onwards seemed to have a strong hatred towards him. A short time after this incident, in an unplanned segment, Punk uh -huh. would call out Paige, which seemed designed to embarrass him and make him look inferior as a yeah, result. Yeah, he buried him. And, and this is right after he came back from injury. I believe he was supposed to be setting up a match with uh or John Moxley. And he... he I'm watching his promo live, and he starts talking about Adam Page. I'm like, what the fuck? What, what does Adam Page have to do with this? He buried him. He straight up buried him. He knew he wasn't going to come out. I was like, Adam Page, if you want a title for this, your uh, you know, opportunity for this title, come out here. Don't be a bitch. Like, he was burying him, knowing he wasn't going to be out there. It was... It was fucking, it was kind of weird timing-wise, too. Don't. Punk would then go one step further, and in his last AEW appearance to date, Punk would blast Paige during an all-out post-press conference, buried. referring to him as an empty-headed, you know what, as well as <laughs> stating that Paige went into business for himself. It's worth noting that Paige is universally liked by the AEW locker room, and it seems rather peculiar that it was Punk of all people to pick a fight with a former AEW world champion. But there you have it, folks. Ten yeah, months man. And ultimately, because of that whole fucking debacle, we don't even have CM Punk in the company. Or in AEW. Well, he's he's there, but he's not really there. Tony Khan is just paying him pretty much to do what he wants outside of AEW, as long as he don't go to WWE. Ah, this is it's quite depressing. <laughs> this was... uh quite depressing <laughs> that, that made me sad <laughs> that, that legit made me damn sad because of all the great opportunities and matches we could have got with CM Punk if he was still here in AEW <laughs> but comment down below let me know which some of these uh, uh, I guess fights and beefs did you not know about I did not know Kurt Angle and Eddie Guerrero had a little scuffle, you know, a few, a few brouhaha's <laughs> uh, back in the day. So I did not know that. I thought that was a pretty interesting tidbit, man. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate your kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.